Today in Thunkable, we're going to be doing something pretty exciting. We're going to be tying together some of the skills we've learned uh, in Google Sheets, where we've done things like creating a bistro um, information system. So here you can see I've got uh, what we've worked with in the past, where we see what date, what type of food, and the details of that food, uh, and when it's available, and we've used... Um, our query tool to pull in only the information about what food is available uh, for today into its own sheet here. And we're going to be using this data in Thunkable to create an, uh, a, a cafeteria kind of menu that looks like this. It'll show you all the options of the items that are available today. And when you click on a particular item, it'll take you to that item show you a close-up picture of it and a description as well as a cost. And then you can jump back and click on a different item and see that as well. So that's what we're going to work on today. It ties in really well with all the things and all the skills that we already know about Google Sheets. So let's figure out how we did it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a new app with the plus button here, and let's call it Cafeteria. And uh, I'm just going to say just testing under categories. Make sure not to click the try out the drag and drop interface. The drag and drop interface is great, but it is missing a lot of the key components we're going to be using for this tutorial. So go ahead and make sure that's not checked and hit create. All right. Well, to start things off, let's throw a label at the very top just to describe what it is we're doing here. So I'm going to grab a label, drop it on screen one, and in text I'm going to write uh, today's cafeteria um, options. I'm going to increase the font size to 20, and maybe I'll make it uh, bold. Oh, that's italic. Wait. Bold. There we go. Looks a little cooler. And uh, next, we're going to use a new uh, component that we haven't used before, and it is called a, uh, a data list viewer. So I'm going to go ahead and just type data here and grab that component, throw it here on the screen. And I'm going to change the order of things. So I've got my data viewer and my label below it. I want my label above it, so I'll just drag that up here. And then there we go. Looks a bit better. Okay, so let's add a data source. All right, before I can add a data source, I need to make sure my data source is ready. And so you can download, or sorry, you can add this Google Sheet to your Google Sheets easily by going to the following URL, bit.ly slash cafe dash sheet. Or if you're in my class, in uh, Schoology, go ahead to 3.5, creating a cafeteria menu in Thunkable. Click on the link that pops up, and it'll let you make a copy of this spreadsheet directly to your Google Drive. So whichever is easier for you. Okay, once you have a copy of that in your Google Drive, back here in Thunkable, we'll be able to add a data source. So I'm going to go ahead and say add. You can see I already have a few data sources. I'm going to say create new. And there are a few different options you can use in Thunkable. We're going to be using Google Sheets because we already know a ton about Google Sheets. So the first thing you need to do is select which Google Sheet. So if you just made a copy of my spreadsheet to your Google Drive, it's going to be called copy of the bistro, um, something like that. But I'm just going to go ahead and find mine is called bistro, not copy of, because I am using the original and not the copy. So I'll go ahead and hit create. It's asking here, which row is the header, which is the columns. Here we go. We can see our data sources now, Bistro. So let's get all our, all our data to format correctly. Um, if you look in the spreadsheet, you'll notice that there's some interesting information. Under the sheet called today, it shows only the items available today, which today happens to be. Um, the first, uh, sorry, the 10th of January, 2022, has the type of food that it is, sandwich, salad, pasta, hot option. It has the details or description, I guess, uh, a price, 
and then a picture, which is a URL to like a JPEG or a PNG file for each of these items. You can kind of hover over it and click on it if you want to see. It doesn't show the image here in Google Sheets. It just shows the URL. But we're going to be able to use that URL to load that image directly in Thunkable. So back here in Thunkable, uh, we need to make sure that we are uh, we're displaying this data um, viewer list the way we want. So we want to be able to show a, a small picture of the item, uh, the description of that item, as well as like a subtitle telling us a little bit about, uh, you know, is it a sandwich, is it a soup, whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and click here on this view. And that gives us some options down here. It gives us the option of pulling in a picture, the title, and a subtitle. We're going to use um, the table today as opposed to sheet one. That's the one that gives us the view into our data. Remember, we learned last semester how to query our data and select only for today's date. So that's already set up here. You can take a look at the code again in the spreadsheet to see how it's done with this formula, but it's choosing only options from today. If you're doing this um, tutorial and it's past this week, you might want to come into sheet one here modify the year, month, and day. That will automatically create this date on the side and then it'll work for you. So you should put dates that are today and the next few days that you might be working on the spreadsheet. So you can see how the data changes as you work or as the days go by. All right, here we are back in Thunkable. So we've chosen the table today. We have to specify which column has the picture in it. And because we have, uh, we've named all of our um, the header in our columns, we know that our picture is under picture, which is row E. We don't need to know that here in Thunkable. We just specify picture is under the column with the header picture. We want details to be our sort of title, or, and then um, type will be our subtitle. You'll notice nothing really happens over here. It changes the format, and that's it. It doesn't show you a live preview of what's going on. And even sometimes when I hit the preview button, it doesn't always build the list here. I'm going to go back to edit. Let's um, click here to view the data for a second. We'll click here on today. We'll see date, type, details, price, and picture here. I'll close that. I'll hit preview again. And like I said, most of the time this doesn't work here. So instead I push this live test button. And there we can see it's pulling in all the details. Ham and cheese sandwich. Um, vegetarian chickpea salad. It's showing us all this stuff and we haven't even had to write a single line of code yet and we're already pulling on all these details from a spreadsheet. And because we already know a lot about spreadsheets, there's some powerful stuff we can do in the back end with our spreadsheet uh, and the data. So when I click on the, these the items though, nothing happens. And that's where we're going to have to pull out some code, pull out some blocks and make this do something. So let's do that now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on blocks here. So I've clicked on blocks and I don't have anything there yet. So let's go under our data viewer list and see what options we have there. Well, we have this one that says when data viewer list item is clicked, that's the one we're going to use. And what does it get us? It gets us a row ID. A row ID is just like a fancy random number that that's not random number, but it's a, it's, it's a number that pertains to the ID of the uh, row that all the data is in. So what do we want to do with that? Well, we need to remember that row ID because we're going to create a new screen. And in that new screen, we're going to pop open some data. So let's go back into design for a second. We've only really dragged in one block of code here, but we know we need another screen because we want to bring up the details of that um, food item. So I'll push plus here. Let's get a new screen. Let's rename our screen. Uh, if we add multiple screens, we're going to want to know what they all do. So let's just call this item details screen. Okay, I'm going to use camel caps to name that there. Item details screen. Come back to screen one. So and block. So what do we want it to do? Well, when we click on that item, we know we want to jump over to another screen. So we'll say navigate to we don't want to go to screen one. We want to go to item details screen. If I click on live test here, you'll see now when I click an item, it takes me to a blank screen. So let's figure out what we want to do on that screen. 
So I'm going to go into item details screen and let's build the design for this screen. So we know we want a picture of the item. We want a description of it, the type of item, the price, and we want a button to go back. So let's add all those things. Let's add our label for description. The type of item it is the price of the item, an image, so we can show a picture of the item, a, a button, so we can go back to the main screen. And let's change the order. Let's put the button to go back at the bottom of the screen. So up here, we're, we're uh, in our item detail screen, I'm going to just drag that all the way down to the bottom. Let's rename some of these things now. Because we're working with so many um, labels, we need to name these things so we don't lose track of which thing is which. So let's start by clicking on our image, and it's called image one. I think that's okay because we're only using one image on this, this particular screen, but we are using three labels. So let's rename them. Let's call this, instead of label four, let's call this details label. Click the next label. It's gonna give us the type of food that it is. So we'll call this one type label. You know what, I'm gonna use camel caps type label. Go back and do that one in camel caps too. The third one is gonna give us the price. We'll call that one price label. And this button, let's call it our back button. We might end up adding another button to this screen later. So back button. And we'll change the text on the button to just say back. Let's also add a little margin to the top of the button to push it down. I'll show you what I mean. So we can add a number of pixels that appear before the button appears. And that makes it sort of push further away from uh, these items. So I just put 20 in there. You could put 30, 40, whatever you think looks best. Okay. And that gives it the back button, a little space from the, the items on the screen. Okay. So how do we get these items to actually have um, things in them? Before we do that, let's make our back button work. That's the easiest thing. So I'm going to go here into blocks. I'm going to find our back button drawer, which is down here. And I'm going to say when our back button is pushed or clicked, what do we want to do? Well, let's go to control. We want to navigate back to screen one. Easy peasy. Let's make sure these buttons work. All right. So here we are. Nothing is appearing. Not even an image or the shell of an image, but I can push back. It takes me back here. If I click one of these items, it just takes me back and forth to that screen. So our navigation is working. Let's make the code work now. So I'm going to go ahead and click screen one get back to screen one's code. We need to pass this row ID into this screen. Right now it's here, but we're not doing anything with it. So let's make uh, a variable to remember it. So I'm gonna go here in variables. And when our code starts, we need to initialize uh, our variable and we'll give it a name. So let's call it uh, item clicked ID. Do that in camel caps and we don't need to initialize it to anything here we can't use this row id until we're within this until an item has been clicked and so before we navigate to that screen we want to go into our variables and we want to set at our app variable item clicked to row id now we can use that row id once we're on the other screen so let's write the code to do that i'm going to go into item details screen. And what do we want to do? The name of our screen is item details screen. So there's a drawer for that there, item details screen, and it has a when item details screen opens. So let's use that event to trigger loading up all of the proper things from the spreadsheet. So let's start with the most exciting part, which is maybe the image. I'm going to go into image one. And I'll say, we want to set image one's picture to 
something. Well, what do we want to set it from? Well, we have our data sources. And if I click there, you'll notice we have our get values from Bistro. So let's grab that. That's talking about our spreadsheet that we've linked in. And which sheet do we want to use? We want to use the today sheet. And it's not the date column we want. We want the picture column. But we have to give it a row ID. Luckily, we've created a variable to do that. It's over here. And we're going to say app variable item clicked ID. So let's test this. This is going to work now. When we click on an item, we'll see the picture and we'll be able to go back. So I'll go to live test. I'm going to hit back. Let's choose an item. I'm hungry. I feel like a chicken Caesar wrap. When I click it, it loads the image and I can go back. Okay. So I think you'll figure out what you need to do from here. It's pretty easy. We just need to go into each drawer for each of our labels and set the information in the same way. So to get the, um, the details label, we'll go here, set details label text to click that in there. Go to data sources again, get value from Bistro, grab that, and not sheet one, we want the today sheet, and this time we want details. And again, we need our variable, our app variable item clicked ID. Now, something I like that's really nice here is I can now right click this whole, this green block here, and it'll duplicate anything attached to it by choosing duplicate. So now I have this whole thing. I'm going to click it into the bottom. Now, instead of changing de the details labeled text, let's change type and we'll change its text to type. And that's it. We only have to change those two things. Let's get the price up now. Duplicate again, right click and duplicate here. We'll choose price label in type. We want price. Okay. Our app is totally going to work just the way I showed you at the start of the video. So let's test it out. Live test. Let's click an item. How about pork dumplings? There they are. It's the hot option. It costs $8. Let's go back. Choose a vegan chickpea sandwich. It's pretty darn good. And we see the image, we see all the details. These items are coming in live from our spreadsheet. Now the cool thing is, tomorrow, there's a different set of options in there. You'll notice that today's date is here. If I look under sheet one, there are a whole bunch of similar but different items that are for tomorrow's date. Because this spreadsheet is being automatically um, generated using this query, Tomorrow, that data will live update and Thunkable will give me new options for tomorrow's items when I go to my live test. It's pretty cool and pretty powerful what you can do when combining spreadsheets with Thunkable. This is part one of a two-part video. We're going to learn how to do some more amazing things, not just pulling data in from spreadsheets. We're going to learn how to add items to our spreadsheet in tomorrow's video.